Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we're going to talk about a very serious privacy concern that you should look into and we're going to talk about what it is, how it works, and what to do about it. Uh, because this is something, and I know I've talked about this a couple of times in the past. Um, I, I think I first talked about this somewhere in the middle of the summer and then uh, it came up in my news and this is called Session Replay. And we're going to have a look at what Session Replay means. So in short, session replay is a, uh, it's the ability for a company to track what you are doing. And so we're going to go ahead and start by having a look at uh, the, the website of one of these companies. Um, so Clicktail is, is one of the more prominent companies. There's about seven or eight of these that I know of. Uh, and I might consider spending some time looking for more because this is a pretty significant thing. And so what this is, now Clicktail, basically what they do is they want to measure an customer analytics. They, and, and of course, every business, that you, the more information you have, the more effectively you can sell things. Now, to me, I'm split over that. Obviously, a company wanting to sell some products is a fine thing, okay? No company won't just gets in the business to not sell any products. I get that, and that's perfectly fine. The problem is, is that a lot of modern day, 21st and beyond century um, uh, analytics is extremely too invasive and extremely problematic. And this is something, I'm going to show you something today that I believe should be government regulated. I think that this thing should be banned. I'm okay with some degree of analytics, but this goes too far. Because what Session Replay does is it allows an industry, whether it be the end client or these guys here, and both of them have this data, to replay what you do on your desktop. Every keystroke you log into a web form, wherever your mouse goes, and in some instances if you have a camera where your eyes are looking, things like that. And so that's what they, these do. So let's go ahead and have a look at Clicktail's website. I'm talking about session replays. Watch replays of customers browsing sessions to visualize exactly what they see and do on your site. Desktop or mobile, everything is captured so you can optimize strateg uh, strategically based on actual user behavior. This thing will take screenshots. This thing will log the keystrokes. It will dictate where the mice goes, etc. And so, um, you know, here's a there's a webinar over here. Here's a financial case study. Okay, so, you know, 14% increase in overall conversions over mobile, 10% applications, you know, all of these are, are things that, that these data-driven companies want to do. And so what they're basically doing is they deploy a JavaScript text that every time there is a keystroke or a mouse wheel move or anything else, then it will take that data and it will record that data and pass it along. Now I said, uh, as I said, I talked about these companies in the past uh, because I saw this a while back and I didn't hear anything of it until just this last week this uh, research report came out um, where uh, they looked at several different sites and they identified about what is it, 1,700 sites I think uh, that utilize these things and this is probably not a all extensive list. So here you can see clicktail.net is one of the more popular American companies at least. You can see Microsoft, Adobe, GoDaddy, Skype, HP, SharePoint, Samsung, um, I don't know that company, Home Depot, uh, Bitbucket, Rotten Tomatoes, Norton, Office 365, Intel, Costco, The Gap, Ancestry.com, Xbox, Autodesk, Windows, CBS, T-Mobile, Chegg.com, Sears, okay, and it goes on and on and on. These are big companies. These aren't just little things. And uh, they have, of course, there's, um, you know, 50 pages at 25 per page. We can actually bump this up to 100 in our listing. And when we bump it up to 100, um, you know, there's 13 pages of these. So you can see there's a lot of these companies. So let's go ahead and, and have a look at some of these companies and, and how you can see what's going on. So let's pick one of these. Let's go to GoDaddy. And we're going to use GoDaddy because um, I am a web designer. And while I do not in any way, shape, or form recommend GoDaddy services, I do have several clients that use them. And so 
uh, we're going to go ahead and have a look at their website. Now, I have written a script, uh, the end notes here, and I'll show you at the end of the video, I've written a script to block all of these that I know about. Um, and there's probably more out there, and I'd be interested in anybody that knows them and how to do this or can follow along this video and figure it out. I'm very interested in, in maybe maintaining that uh, and getting that larger. And so um, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to go over to GoDaddy. Now, I'll, and I said that to say that I have a script that blocks all these, but I disabled the clicktail part. So all of the other ones won't work on my system. Clicktail will. Okay, so here I'm loading this up in um, in Firefox Quantum. I'm going to push the F12 key, which brings up Developer Tools. Okay, so on Developer Tools, we have a variety of things. The thing that's interesting for us that, that's important is Network. Okay, Network will show in real time what is going on on a website. I'm going to refresh the page, and you can see how many of those instances are loading. So these are all the different Internet requests that this page is taking. Now, one of the things that I have found is that um, if a company is deploying one of these scripts, they're probably deploying multiple. Uh, and I don't know if that's going to be the case here. Um, we might, uh, there might be something, uh, if I see some here, let's see, Google Analytics. These here are ad service things that are being blocked in my host file already. So the ones that show up with an X are not loading. Uh, so you'll see they have zero data. So we're actually going to do a search now for Clicktail. So these are all of the things going on on Clicktail that are being called. So it's caching several CSS element or uh, several uh, web design elements. Um, so you can see it's not all just clicktail.net. Uh, you can see that you have conductor.clicktail.net, uh, cdnssl.clicktail.net, ing-district.clicktail.net. Um, I'm not sure why this one's getting us there, but so what we're going to do now is if I come up to this, you'll see that when I clicked on that, you'll see that another one popped up. I'm going to go ahead and type a domain name in. Let's do testdomain.com. Okay. So as I did that, it is sending uh, plain text stuff. I don't know if I can actually see what we are sending in here or not. It is possible. I did not actually research exactly how to find that. I'm just going to uh, see this. The the article token here that I'll, I'll put up in the uh, site will actually tell you uh, where that is. But you can see what it's doing is it is identifying that I am on a text, plain text form. That's what we're seeing down here and uh, it's kind of keeping things alive. Every time I'm clicking on it, it's doing that. So there I've backspaced, so it creates another one. So this is kind of what it's doing, is it is, uh, it is accessing all these different things. Let's see if we can find another form, though. Let's go ahead and click on, um, I don't know, let's just scroll around, and let's find... See if we can find like a sign up. No, you know what we'll do? We're going to do something. I'm going to find a domain that's probably available because it's going to be gibberish. So that's probably available. All right. And so now, let's see what it's been doing here. It's recording all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and hit the search button there. And uh, this is going to take us, hey, it's, it's available. Buy it before someone else does. And it's still more clicktail stuff. So here's... Another one, I was trying to see if there's any information here that I can see right here. All right, so now this takes us kind of to a sales page. So let's go ahead and just say, let's just go ahead and add that to the cart. And we got two more, conductor.net. Uh, uh, so now it's kind of bringing us over here, interacting the number of clicks. Uh, let's see, let's see, that added to cart. Let's go ahead and continue to cart. It's going to load a new page, so we're going to get a whole lot. Now, notice it's only giving me my click tail. So everything you see here, it's because I have this. Um, this is everything, <laughs> okay? But I'm just going to keep that click tail up so that you will only see the click tail uh, results come up as I, as I click on things. Okay, so I'm going to say no thanks, no thanks. Let's continue on with these options. That's going to send us another click. Here's our parameters. Uh, let's say we're new to GoDaddy. Okay. And 
Message ID is three. Let's see if anything else shows up. Now, here's the important thing about on this page. Watch as I'm as I'm clicking things. It goes into a new one, so it now knows that I changed uh, my my form. And let's go ahead and enter stuff in. It's entered four characters in, so you're going to see here that uh, we have uh, three more uh, three more interactions, three more clicks. Here's the timestamp. Um, here's the engagement time. Here is the uh, project ID links back. Here's the visitor ID, so this can be tracked back to me based on a variety of things, including um, IP address, whatever else. This is that's all logged, you know. Um, all that is logged. And so let's see. Just click down here. We'll get another one down here in just a second as it's downloading more information. So every single time I'm doing this, what it's doing is it's making an HTTP request and it's sending this data back up into the cloud. Notice that I mean the previous pages I clicked on things I have not clicked on anything yet. And this is simply by coming to this page because it has a form, it knows what I'm entering. It's sending that data back. And actually the original article goes into more detail showing you exactly what is being grabbed and how they did it. Um, so I'm not uh, do going into all of that, uh, all of that detail here. Uh, but this is all that's going on is it's monitoring, it's double checking what you're doing, it's resending data. Uh, and every single time I'm doing something, it is making the logs. Let's go ahead and go back to their original article now. Um, so here is, uh, let's see. So here is a, a description of what's going on. So here is on Bonobus here. And uh, as you click on these, so you can see here what it's actually sending out. So what they're doing here is they're just, it looks like they're using Chrome based on the look here. And they are in the, um, uh, okay, so they're looking at the full story, uh, .com one here. And uh, it is literally recording the name that as he types it. And it's recording here the card number as they type it. So this is a very serious thing because we have not submitted any forms yet. So suppose I'm like, mm, I decide not to go with this anymore and I close it down. They still have a record of any, everything I've interacted with on this particular site. That is the scary part. Okay. Um, and I can't see quite as clearly here what the data is, but they have that data. They know what I'm, what I'm entering. Uh, they know how I'm entering it. They know the form I'm on. They know the form element ID I'm on. Let's just go ahead and come back to our inspector here and have a look at this form ID here. Okay, so this is the input name. Okay, there's the data, data names. Let's go back to our network and see if there's anything there. Um, so anyway, um, this is why this is important. It's it, this is so important because they are collecting all of this data. They're sharing it not only with this big data conglomerate and these big data conglomerates. They also make all their money selling all the data they've collected through their scripts to other people as well. So I think that it is a major security issue and is major privacy issue to block these texts. <laughs> and so let's talk about what I did to block them. So what you need to do is you. Need need to come in here and identify all of these different elements as they're as they're going so here I can click this let's see if I can get more data on these or not looks like I can I'm used to using a, another networking tool which has slightly different function but what you can see that what I'm getting here um, what I'm getting here is it's calling uh, the various different uh, the various different uh, domains here so conductor .clicktail, um, .net is this one, uh, cdnssl.clicktail.net. So what you do is you want to block this in your host files. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to um, uh, DuckDuckGo 
and I'm actually using DuckDuckGo right now because StartPage seems to be having a lot of problems. I've sent them a, a message about it and I've not heard anything back. Let me know if you're having problems with StartPage. It's just excessively slow. DuckDuckGo seems to be working fine and uh, their new style sheet's not too bad actually. I can actually get to read this now. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the host file. This is what you need to adjust on a computer level and if you're good on your router then you might want to go over to your router and uh, block these on the router level if if you're capable of doing that. Uh, I hate how to geek but I know that they have all three distro or like all three major operating systems on this. And Kitty wants to come up and say greetings to everybody. Hello everyone, block these scripts in your host file because these companies are jerks and they're stealing all your data. I didn't know you cared. Yeah? Alright. So Kitty cares as well. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to adjust your host file. And the host file is a file in your computer that tells your system where to go. It's basically an overwrite for the DNS. So the way DNS is kind of works in, in a cascaded, and the closer it gets to your system, the more um uh, the more um uh, priority it has. So if you have something blocked on your host file on your computer, that takes the ultimate priority over DNS. The next thing is your network. So I can block stuff on a host file on my router as well if I can access that, in which case whatever the computer does will override that, but whatever the uh, the router has will override that and then it goes up to your ISP uh, or any other um, DNS servers that you might be connecting to if you have a VPN you'd be using your VPN unless your router and your computer do anything so basically what you do is if you just have one or two computers you can do this on uh, on your computers and by the way your smartphones some of your phones like my Nexus 5x here I can plug this in and I can adjust the hosts file um, on the uh, I can adjust the host file on the uh, on the phone itself by by plugging it in and doing a, um, a ADB um, pseudo privileges um, connection, which I actually I detailed that on the the videos where I talked about this phone. Um, but on a computer uh, on Windows 8, 8.1, 10, 7, whatever, um, you want to open up Notepad or WordPad, and you have to run it as an administrator. Okay. Um, now there's actually one more step that these guys don't cover in here. First, you have to have your show file extensions. If you do not, then WordPad is going to save the host file as a host.txt, which will not save it. So the first thing you actually have to do is go into your control panel, file uh, file settings, um, or is it? Full, I think it's folder settings, and then you need to go in and sh enable extension types, which you should always enable anyway. It is a huge security problem that Windows disables security, uh, disables your extensions on known file types, because you could get a known file type. You think it's a document because that's what the icon looks like, but it's really an executable file, but you didn't know. So you should always do that if you're running Windows. You should always show your extensions. Um, so you have to show your extensions first. That's what these guys left out at How to Geek. No, go away. I don't want your stupid newsletters. All right. Um, and then you need to navigate, and on all Windows systems, it's the same. Navigate to Windows, System 32, Drivers, etc., Hosts. Once you get here, you will likely see just a blank window. You need to go into your open dialog and type star dot star. That's going to show you all of the files. Then you want to open up that file, and then what you need to do is you need to enter the script. Now, this is where they have it incorrect. You do not want to use 0000. zero, zero, zero. Some computers and some systems and some networks may not be looking for that, and it could cause a problem. You want to use 127.0.0.1 because that is defined in any computer as the local computer. And what that means is that it, you're basically going to be forcing every one of these sites to be going to local machine, which means the connection will instantly fizzle. And uh, it will not, sh it'll basically sp uh, speed up your system and uh, it will cause, um, basically speeds up your system and, and allows your, your system to run a lot better. So then you want to type in 127.0.0.1, put in a space or a tab, and then whatever URL you are trying to edit. Okay. Um, and uh, as you are uh, as you are doing that, then you want to uh, finally save the file. And then when you go to that particular URL, it fizzles. Okay. 
So they're doing it there. Now, um, Linux and Mac, it is the same either way. What you want to do is just open up your terminal. Uh, both Linux and Mac have the terminal. You want to do sudo and then choose your, uh, choose your editor. They're using Vim here. I prefer nano. Uh, just do sudo nano or sudo Vim and go to ets, uh, etc. or etsy, however they say that, etc. slash hosts. That's going to pull up your hosts file. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to enter all of the things that you want to block. And you can do that on Mac or you can do that on Linux. It works the same way. So I would encourage you to insert these scripts. Um, now to find these, the challenge is you can't just do clicktail.net um, because the host file, it has to be the exact domain, which means that every one of the domains, you also want to enter the www and the non-www version. So if there's five different URLs, you are going to have 10 entries on your system. So um, what I did is if you go on over to my site at switched to Linux, Uh, dot com you call this up um, make sure before the net neutrality thing goes you call your Congress and tell them leave net neutrality alone because the FCC has lost their ever-loving mind um, come on down to privacy resources and I have a script right here so you can actually download this script I'm just gonna go ahead and open it right here uh, basically this is just a uh, session replay script and uh, that didn't do what I wanted it to do I wanted it to actually just Open up, not extract. Let's see if I can actually open that. There you go. Okay, so open that. So I have a README which just tells you how to how to make the edits. And here I'm just going to open the scripts.txt. So basically all you need to do is grab this, uh, grab all of the entries in here and just add those to your hosts file. Now you'll see two of these, um, Demdex and uh, Quantum Numeric. Uh, every one of these are actually using a custom app build and that's a pain in the butt which means that you would literally have to block every single site. So you can shortcut that by blocking this IP address and this IP address in your firewall settings. So if you block those IP addresses you'll still cause the fizzle. Um, but this way here, this will work for everywhere else. So you can see I have the www and the non-www for everything. You'll see here for clicktail, there's a, a n numerous of them, clicktail.net, uh, conductor.clicktail.net, uh, ing district, uh, cdn, ssl, um, cdn. Uh, so those were all ones that I've identified. So what I did is I went through these sites and I looked at at least five sites that contained all of these. So hopefully I have them all. It's possible I don't. If you find more that are not there, let me know and I'd be glad to update the script. I want to keep this updated. And basically this thing, this script here is going to block all of these session replay scripts that I know of. So you can go ahead and over to switch to linux.com uh, forward slash privacy dash resources. You can download that file and deploy that to your uh, host file. And then that should get rid of, uh, that should get rid of the, these, um, these, uh, these scripts. So I've actually pulled up my host file and, uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, and show you that. Let me just, yeah, actually, this is not a development computer, so I shouldn't have anything, any challenges in there with showing you that. Okay. So here is, uh, here is my terminal and I'm, you're doing, see, I'm doing sudo nano Etsy hosts. It's going to ask me for my password. And then here, um, this is the local host defined. Um, these here are actually just, um, uh, test scripts for, um, doing some local stuff. Of course, these are the Bitcoin miners. If you want to block the Bitcoin miners, uh, coinhive.com, www.coinhive.com, oftmine.com, www.oftmine.com. So if you enter those, then you'll see here that I have, um, I have all that script deployed. Now, what I did here is I, uh, just for the purpose of this video, is I came in here and I um, commented these out. So any line with a... Uh, a hashtag in front of it's going to be commented out. So I went ahead and uh, and did that. So we're going to keep that. And so 
Let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so you can see that a little bit better. It was pushing too far across the edge there. All right, so there is what I have there. Now, the other thing I have is if you go to this file here, this one might be out of date by now. Some people said it was out of date. But this guy here is actually a script that blocked every bad script known to man. Now, just a warning if you're doing this on Linux, pasting this in through the terminal takes a long time. So if you're pasting this in, go ahead, paste it in and let it sit for a while. It's going to take a bit. I found it's faster if you actually uh, here on Linux Mint where I can open my system files as root. It's just a lot faster to do it through the GUI. Um, but, you know, that's up to you. So uh, I did make changes to that uh, by reblocking all of those session replay scripts. And I want to keep all those blocked. So I'm going to hold control, hit X, uh, Y for yes, and hit enter for the name. And then that is, uh, that is how we do that. So that is all about session replay and what to do about it, what it is, and you know how to block it. And I would highly encourage you to block it because this is a really big deal that companies are grabbing data before you even submit it because they're knowing, they're even able to, to second, you know, pick up your second guesses. They're giving you a lot of, uh, you know, th they're collecting a lot of data. And imagine if these were deployed and they are deployed on some of the health sites like WebMD. I'm not sure if WebMD exactly deploys these particular scripts. Um, but that would be a scary thing if you're typing in stuff and not only WebMD but Clicktail and, and related, they're related companies. I actually think they do have one. Um, I just don't know for sure if they're a session replay script or just a customer analytics script. I know WebMD has customer analytics scripts. I just don't know if they do the session replay. Uh, so I went ahead and blocked those as well in my script. So it is very important to do this. And I think maybe this is something that we need to have a lot more awareness on. So spread this video around. Um, let people know that web forms, even if you don't hit the submit button, still know exactly where you are on the site, exactly what they submitted. And I just think that's way too much data collection, especially since most people have no idea that that's going on. Uh, but I encourage you to take a look at that. I'll have the links for the, the research articles and the affected websites down below. See if any of your favorite sites are on those. And of course, uh, you can go and grab that script from switchtolinux.com as well. So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. And if you would like to help support what we're doing, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support while you're over there. You can learn about the current ways to support us. We have Amazon links. If you buy anything on Amazon at all, it's, I know it's a great Christmas shopping time. If you want to help support us through that shopping, you can buy uh, with the, the Amazon link I down, have down below. It doesn't cost you anything more. It's just Amazon's going to send me a little bit of a referral, uh, referral uh, tip for, for sending you over there with my link. I also have a Patreon account, and I'm uh, re trying to revise my Patreon goals, and so I'm going to be looking into things to do for that. So if there are any other thoughts or comments or suggestions or any other sites that you know of that are doing this that we should add to that script, please feel free to uh, leave that information below. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.